Okay. We're going to dance a little later. Is that okay? Are you <laughs> is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to pray for a couple people and then invite Pastor Bob to come up to share the encouragement. Father, I thank you for, for what you're doing. So f- a word for, for uh, Global Revival Church this morning. I saw two things. I saw the Lord preparing the church to get ready for North Korea. So I saw the Lord bringing people to Hawaii to be trained under you, to be trained through you, in connection with you, some kind of collaboration. And this will be a base to release people to North Korea. And I hear the Lord saying, get ready. Because the reason why the Lord sent me here is because this is, this is a, a, a sign of acceleration. And how many of you know we're in a season of acceleration? God is doing things so quickly. Even as I'm here in Los Angeles, it started snowing. And so much flood, rains and flood. And since, you know, there's unusual signs that follow. And I feel that God is saying um, there's acceleration. And sometimes God sends people. How do you know it's a new season? When, you, when God sends somebody that you didn't expect. So this is a suddenly for this church. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a, I, I am the suddenly for your church. But it's the Lord sent me to tell you that you need to get ready for what's coming. And things might happen very quickly. Just get ready. And it's going to be a joyous season. So I saw North Korea. So another thing I saw was um, Israel and Jewish connection. And I believe God is saying he's also already given you a lot of downloads of the Jewish-Israel connection. And uh, God's given Pastor John Paul a lot of teachings on it. But there is a greater move that will happen where, where the Jewish people will be saved. And it will coincide with what God's going to do in North Korea. As God restores the Jerusalem of the east, which is Pyongyang, when God restores Pyongyang, there's going to be a massive salvation of souls in Israel. You see, Daniel, you've got to pick these things up. This is a prophetic word. You've got to record it. This is what you need to record. I'm releasing the word of the Lord right now. Yeah, that's you need to say. Because when prophecies come, I'm not, I didn't plan this three seconds ago. It's just coming out of my mouth. It's a rhema now word, and I'm, say, I'm speaking to you that as God restores the, north, uh, the, the Pyongyang, the e- Jerusalem of the east, which was Pyongyang in North Korea, as God restores it, and the Lord will restore quickly, that Jewish people will come to the Lord. There's going to be a shaking in Israel. So I prophesy that in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray in tongues with me right now. Every disappointment, every discouragement, God is redeeming now in Jesus' name for Global Revival Church. You have been downcast. You have been discouraged. But God says, I am fulfilling my word for you. God is saying it's your Kairos time. Even in the next three months, there's going to be an acceleration and the quickening of what God wants to do in Jesus' name. As long as you're open to what God's doing, as long as you say yes, yes, yes to the Spirit of God, God is going to bring an increase. And I prophesy over you that there's property for you, Pastor. There's property land that God wants to give you. There's financial blessings and property blessings that will come. Dream big. Ask God for big things because you have not petitioned the Lord. The Lord says, ask, and I will give it to you. I see land. I see centers. I see buildings. I see 24-hour house of prayer for you. That's open because your heart is to keep it open. Right now, there's nowhere to keep open the office space that we had meeting yesterday. You couldn't keep it open, you know, 24-7. But God says there's a space for you where Holy Spirit will come and reside. So I bring it forth now in Jesus' name. A center for this church. I call it forth now from the heavenly realm. In Jesus' name, may you find it. And I see number four over this building. I feel like four will be a, a sign for you. Number four will be a sign for you. I just bless you now in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen and amen. Yeah, that's it for now. And then <laughs> Pastor Bob, come on up. And can we give a round of applause to Pastor Bob?
here. Praise God. It's so nice to be back here again. Um, yeah, I just want to share about my experience uh, through revival in myself. Um, when I first got Holy Spirit filled, I was so, so, so wanting, uh, first of all, to consume the Word of God. I was so hungry, you know, and uh, if there is a, a, a meeting, I would drive eight hours, and when I reach there, somehow the prophet would pick me up. You, over there, God saying the boom. You know what? When, when you're so hungry, you need to hear from God. You just have to have it. You just have to have it. Because, you, you know, you want, to, you want to be trained by all these generals. Because you, as a general, you have to be trained with multiple sorts and all the stuff. And then you can go out. And when you go out, you have results. And you are fearless. When you're trained by all these generals, when you charge, you draw your sword. Just go charge. You don't care who comes along with you. You are doing your assignment. And the enemy is afraid of you because you have no fear. Even if it costs my life. Because this is what God has called us to do. Time in eternity is so long. You know the best investment for you now is to put everything for the glory of God. To do what God has called us to do. To be obedient to what He has told us to do. You know, I was saying, God, I want to go to all this nation to touch the people. I was wondering, how am I going to North Korea? And now I know how. Hallelujah. I got a contact. Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. You know, I'm not afraid of going to the front line. I'm not afraid. Some of the most dangerous places I play, I've been is, is in the West Bank. I remember I flew by myself. JFK was in his airplane and it's loaded with Arabic people. When I enter the airplane, I start to weep because I know I may not come back alive. Because all these people are talking Arabic and I was going by myself. But I was wrong. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit is coming and it's in you. So as I walked into, as I landed in Tel Aviv, guess what? My first connection as a worship leader, underground. So he brought me, introduced me to people. I'm going to Israel and I go to the West Bank. I rented a car, I go deep inside there. I remember walking into Jerusalem by myself. And there was this, this Muslim guy with an AK-47. You know, he's like a gangster down there. I'm somebody new that walked into their, their, their town. He stared at me with his gun holding. And I look at him, my God, I say, God, yeah, I, in the name of Jesus, I bind that finger twitching demons in Jesus' name. So he won't pull a trigger. And I was driving all over there. I was leading people, the Muslim people, and some people don't like me. They actually stone me. They throw stone at me because I'm preaching the gospel. Just like in the Bible, you get stoned. And, and I was going into one place. I met uh, another guy. You know, he was limping like that. He was following me. And, and I was praying for this person who had a pain in his leg. Uh, so I was praying for this person. My, this person that followed me, he got healed. And after that, he said, Bob, I'll follow you wherever. So we walked into the West Bank. We were driving along the border of West Bank and, and Jordan, you know. And uh, even there, I met Korean people. I talked to them, why are you here? I said, why are you here, you Korean people? He said, he doesn't talk too much English. He said, no, 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 no. And then he, I said, these Koreans are crazy. You know, I thought I was the only crazy guy, but they were there, you know. Because you know what? They are people that will do anything for God. I remember I was driving and my friend said, Bob, you just missed a bomb. I said, what bomb? This guy was a pilot. He, he used to, you know, fly on those fields to, so, and I, and I said, all right, I'll turn around. And I look, and there was two artillery that was unfloated next to the road. I said, I just missed it. You know, if my, my car tire touched it, I would have blown up into pieces. But God had more for me to do. And there was another time I was preaching. There was a rally, the Hamas people, they were, they were on top of the truck, and uh, they, they were Get all these Muslim people gathering and they were shooting machine gun, boom, 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 boom. And I was leading these kids to the Lord. Okay, this is what you the salvation prayer. I, I don't care. I don't care. You know, and many of these Muslim people, when you lead them to the Lord, 
they say, let's go hide behind the room because they don't want to be identified. They are Christians in all those places. In fact, when I was down there, there was another woman. Her name is Karen Dunham. She had a church down there. She led all this Hamas woman and everything. And a church was firebombed three times. Her car was burned down three times. She, one time she was beaten on the head and she fell on the floor. I know when, when, you, when, when you hang around these kind of people, you, you, you know, this is real business. They're going all out. When I got spray fuel, I knew, I knew, I knew I'm going to go all out. It's just like po playing poker. You know, you got the five cards, all of them, J, 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You have all pure part of the time money and everything. I push out Jesus or bust everything. You give everything and you step onto believing and charge to go. Because I have completely lost my normal worldly mind. I only got one mission to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. You know. In the army of God, there are many different branches. You have the regular army. You have the Marines. You have the Navy. You have the Air Force. You have the Coast Guard. Some choose to do this. Some choose to be in that. But we are all soldiers for Christ. But God, God, God is looking for the SEAL team. And many of you others in the SEAL team, you just got to step up and commit and say, all help. I was telling people when I first saw this man, his name is David, uh, uh, Richard O'Neill. He, he killed Osama bin Laden. He was being interviewed. So they, the interviewer asked him, Tell me what it is like. He said, we've been trained, we've been trained, we've been trained, we practice, we practice, we practice, and then we go there, we do our job. And then he said, that I've done 40-something missions. He said, every time before I go for a mission trip, I write a letter to my wife, <laughs> to my son, to my daughter. As this, this is the last letter. He is so committed to, to the United States. He will give his life. We are looking for people like that. The kingdom of God is looking for fearless leaders, fearless soldiers that will do it, even if it requires your life. What terrified the enemy is the one that charges us that knows that even if he dies, he'll, he'll... that is the kind of warrior we need to be. Fearless. Go. Execute your assignment. Whatever God tells you to do, you don't care because all you need is your Holy Spirit to go there. Just be obedient. Charge. I was in Kuwait. I was in Bahrain. Because you know what? No, nobody want, knows Bob Koo. Who's Bob Koo with a Malaysian accent in the United States? They don't want to let me come to their church. So I got to go to places that nobody wants to go. I went to Kuwait. I went to Bahrain. I went to UAE. You know, I saw miracles in Kuwait. All these people with all with just a little slit on eye. Boom. You know, I, in Bahrain, this man who came into the service, he had two eyeball surgery, and he was going for his third one that day, and he heard that I was going to be there. So he said, I'll try a different Jewish doctor. He came for Dr. Jesus. He came, and boom, his eye was healed. And then he went out and tell all his Muslim friends, and all his foreign men start calling me. and said, come, 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 come. You know, I got scared because this is a Sharia law country. And some of them got demons and all kinds of things. And, and they want, I, I want, I, I need help. I got this, this. You know, in deliverance, you need renunciation, repentance, and all that thing. And a lot of these are the Muslim demons. So I got to lead them to, if 
one I was teaching the people how to how to set the, the, the Islamic spirit, you know, from deliverance. And I got to lead them to renounce all kinds of things, including, you know, Allah and Muhammad and all those things. And then one of the pastors said, Bob, you have in your PowerPoint. If they open, you are a dead man. I said, what? He said, hide it somewhere. So I have to hide it somewhere. You know, if you guys have done your deliverance, you know that the spirit, even the most Islamic spirit, they talk back. It's a spirit. They are real. They talk back. We have to force those spirit to lift their curse on the body. It is a very exciting world. I tell you, this spiritual world. And um, recently, it's amazing. So many deliverance as we travel to many different places. One time I was in, uh, in Boston. was this Chinese church down there. I walk and five people manifested on a Sunday night service. So I'm going to invite the song over there. He's going to do the whole deliverance on that. It is uh, very exciting because these things are so real, you know. And um, the, the Bible come alive. I remember one time I was, this guy, I brought him to deliverance. It was not complete. So I was driving him back and all of a sudden he manifested behind my car. I was on I-84 in Connecticut. I was driving. It was lots of traffic and he's menacing, crawling at me. I look in the mirror. I said, in the name of Jesus, by the power, I behind you. I rebuke you. I behind you. With a oh, you know, I started and she was vomiting behind my, you know what? You can do it anywhere. Deliverance because you have the Holy Spirit. You have the authority. You have that power. And you know what? Jesus said, when he walked to that, the, the demons, uh, you remember the seven sons of Shiva, they said, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know, who are you? You know why he said that? Because Paul does a lot of deliverance. Jesus does a lot of deliverance. When, when you send people to the jail, to the prison, all the bad guys, they talk, don't mess, about, mess around with this, this police, don't mess with this sergeant. They all know who they are. So they know. So, you want to be known by those demons because you cast their friends into the pit of hell. And they will talk. They said, Pastor John Paul's coming. Get out of the way. Yeah, yeah. They get, because they know this guy, he, you can't bargain him. You can't bribe him. You cannot do. He's right on the point. Boom, you know. So you want to be like that. You want to fill yourself up with the with the Holy Spirit, with the Word of God. You so feel that. You know, one time I, I cast out this demon. He said, where do I go? He said, do I jump on you? I said, you jump on you, you die because I got so much sword. Because when you fill yourself with the Word of God, they don't like it. They want to jump to a body whereby there's lots of sin, where they feel comfortable. Do not be afraid with them. We have the authority. We have the power. We are the light of this world. We are the sort of this earth. Wherever you go, healing happens. I remember one time I flew to the Philippines. I landed in Taipei. I was waiting. I was a jumbo, this big jet, 7477. There's a whole bunch, 300 people down there sitting, waiting. And I saw this woman walking, nimping. I start going over there. I say, hey, what's wrong with your, your feet? He said, oh, I, I start praying. She got healed next thing. I know I had a line of seven people lining it up. And then and the line was getting longer. You see, wherever you go, you know, when people have nothing to do sitting around, make it, make it a, a healing service. Another time I was invited by the uh, ambassador of Dominican Republic in a Korean restaurant. So, I, you know, I was talking to the ambassador. The next thing, this woman came, the waiter, she bent, she said, ouch. I said, what's that? You know, we started found she had some pain in his neck. I prayed for her. She got healed. She went back to the kitchen. She drank a line of 10 people. <laughs> it was a, a, a lunch meal. It becomes a healing service. They put me in the room. You know, one thing good about it. And then next day, when I, the, 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 the owner of this Korean restaurant called me. He said on the phone, he said, can you come back today? Again? I said, you know, one thing good about Korean people, they know when it's free of charge, hallelujah, come on and help and heal the people. So, my encouragement to you, brothers and sisters, you know, while we are on earth, it's like buying stock IPO. This is the best thing that you could do. Invest your time, invest your hours, invest your money, invest whatever you can, help out, collaborate. It's the great commission. It's the call. We are working together. Every one of us collaborate, help each other. When I first started, oh, I know, so I'm going to help my senior pastor. I'm going to help the, the speakers, you know. 
And when as you as you help, God will see that you are willing, and He's going to promote you. I never ever thought that I can travel to so many places and see miracles and miracles and miracles. And it becomes so alive. And, um, you know, I met a number of people, and I taught them. And they asked me, Bob, can you please hold me? So I ordained about five of them. They're all going everywhere. They are doing signs and wonders, walking over everywhere. Every t- and, uh, you know, I'm functional. Wherever I go, I encourage the people. I said, Pastor Kim, can I come and help, you know? Everywhere I go, I didn't ask them for anything because I know if you are called, God's to carry you. Before I was a software engineer, I had a mortgage, but now I don't have one. I have a software. Before I was a software engineer, I got one car. I got a whole bunch of cars right now because God was sent to those people to take care of you. You know, it, it's not my uh, desire to, to go, go for riches, but just to do. But provision is needed. But God is so good. Many times I drive to a car rental company and then I talk to the people. I pray and heal three person on the car rental. And I take, they come back two weeks. And the, the, the manager say, oh, I got two more sick person. Come on, heal. And I pray to them, they get healed. And then I ask them, how much? They say, it's for you free of charge. Quite a few times I went and eat, you know, I was in barrel. I was uh, eating down there and, and I saw somebody, I decided to walk towards them, pray, they got healed. And then when I come out to pay for that, the, 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 the restaurant owner said, I saw you heal my, my customer, it's free for you. You know, some people use, use credit card, you know, debit card, try using your fate card. <laughs> Hallelujah. One time I ran out of money in Point Barrel where I brought the song there. I said, God, help. You know, I, you know what? Very important. You need intercessors. Intercessors is part of your team. You may be going by, you know, two of you may go, but the back by the, all these people. My, my intercessors, you know, they, they shoot. They, they keep on shooting after early. They bomb up. By the time I landed, that area is all flattened. It's very little resistance. You need those people. So I sent an email, please help. <laughs> yes. I said, I don't like to stay in Iglo. I don't like to eat blubber, you know, the, the whale meat with these Eskimo people. Help. <laughs> so they prayed. And not long before, there was this, this woman. She came with three little toddlers. She's like 22 years old. She said, I saw you preaching at the middle school trying to unify uh, this, uh, all the Eskimo tribe. You said, God told me to give it to you. She gave me a package. I blessed her in the church and she left and I passed it to my wife, Trisha. Trisha opened was was a $5,000 US dollars and hundred dollar bill from a stranger. You know God. God will send people to help you. Do not be afraid. You know, I hang around with a lot of people. I want to learn from them their faith. Some of the people, their faith. A lot of these pastors, I talk to them, they have nothing. They just go by faith. They have a vision and they, they hear God and they go towards that direction. They charge to it. I went up with my wife up to the most dark part of China between Tibet and China border. And we went above the temple. And we started decreeing and praying over the land. And then we, we, we were in a hostel room. We, you know, those Tibetan people come inside and we tell them that Jesus and they were leading them to the Lord. The whole room was filled with the Holy Spirit. I tell you, you feel the presence of God because you need to go. You know to go to those places. You need to go to your neighbor. You need to go to your family members. You need to go. Honolulu, new baby's been born. A lot of souls. Eight billion souls. If one church didn't want you, don't care. There's so many, eight billion people out there. Go, 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 go. So, 
to start a revival. Be the revival. My mission is that I duplicate myself. If you do, if all of us duplicate ourselves, this place just have revival, double. And you teach them to duplicate, it just goes so fast. Just do it. Charge with the sword. I don't care what they say. I know my assignment. I am obedient to the great co-mission which I'm working with my pastor, with all the different ministries. So I don't want to take too much time. Thank you so much for letting me share. Pray in tongues, everybody. Let's just pray for your impartation of spirit of evangelism and faith right now. Mm -hmm. Pray in tongues. God, do everything you want to do today in Jesus' name. Can I have the keyboardist come and play the keys for me? Who plays the keys? Yeah. Can you play? Can you play shout to the Lord? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, we worship you. We just pray for a shift today over Honolulu in Jesus' name. Hey, sing in the spirit, just worship Jesus. Jesus, we worship you. It's okay. We're just going to move on. It's it's fine. It's fine. We're just going to move on. It's okay. It's okay. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonder of your mind. Stand up, to love. Do you have the words? My comfort, 
my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, shout to the Lord on the earth, let us see. Under my feet. Devil's under my feet. 
Yeshua! 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 Come on, pray in tongues. There's a next level Holy Ghost anointing. Some of you are being healed right now. God is releasing healing breakthrough. He's healing you right now. God is pouring His Spirit. Receive it! Get back to your seats. We're gonna. Woo, we broke that thing, huh? We broke it. We broke it. 
Did you feel that breaking? We broke it. So last night I had a dream, or early this morning I had a dream. And it wasn't a good dream. It was a dream where one of the sisters that I knew who used to honor me, she seemed, she's a kind of a, not, not a, a long believer, but I think she came to know Christ about two or three years ago. But um, young people, people who are young in age, young in faith, I urge you to be aware of being prideful. Pride is not of God. Sometimes when you're in pride, you can't even discern that you're prideful. But in this dream, it was this young person who used to really honor me. But in the dream, I knew that she was completely ghosting me or ex like she wasn't even talking to me. And she was, she was judging me. She decided to shut me out of her life. So that was a dream I woke up. And I felt, I, I felt a warning of God that we're really in a battle of, against the religious spirit. Because what, it, what that is, is it's so easy for people who are inexperienced, have not been to the spirit realm I'm talking about. You could be a world traveler, but you can be spiritually blinded. So if you really obey Jesus, you go to different places in the spirit. You're, 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 go, you're in a different place. So if you go all in for Christ, different demons are attached to you. That's why some churches grow mediocre because they're not engaging in warfare. They're not in the spirit. They're kind of mediocre. Mediocrity. Pastors who minister out of mediocrity and out of f flesh, the demons love them. Because pastors who are mediocre, they keep their congregation mediocre. Compromising. So if you go to a church where the pastor is preaching compromise and partnering with the flesh, there are pastors and ministers and people who claim to be ministers who are actually partnering with the devil more than the Holy Spirit. Woo! <laughs> okay, it's, it, this is not your regular Sunday morning, right, Pastor? This is revival. That's why I, I sprinkled some water on you. <laughs> Just to wake you up. Because you guys are all acting too Sunday morning on me today. <laughs> I don't think that's the name and the identity of this church. It's Global Revival Church. I declare this revival 24-7. So I had to spray on you so you wake up. <laughs> we need some cold water sometimes. But you know, like, um, uh, what was I going to say? Some pastors partner with demons, not with the Holy Spirit. Because they're partnering, they're hearing from de de devils. That's why they're against the Holy Ghost. That's why they preach things like there is no such thing as Holy Ghost. And they teach half of the Bible, Right? We are, when revival comes, the biggest opposition, revival in the spirit of prophecy, spirit of Jesus. But when revival comes and Jesus comes, number one enemy that will do all it can to kill is spirit of religion and Pharisee. So this morning the Lord said, be careful of the yeast of Pharisees. The small yeast, Jesus said, small yeast of Pharisees. It will ruin the whole batch. And it was a warning for me for the outpouring that I am kind of stumbled upon. I mean, this, we just call it outpouring because the Lord told me it was. But God said, beware. And this, in this dream, it was this young person who made internal judgments about who I was. It's because she's young. She's not as experienced as I am. So please do not judge your spiritual elders or pastors because they've been to places that you've never been. I'm, talking, I'm not talking about physically. Because of their yes to Jesus, because they're obeying God fully, they're in a different place. They're not, they're not same level as you. And there's something really um, dishonoring to God because the American culture mixed everything up. Think that you and I are the same. No, you're not. You and I are not the same. Oh, um, I just became a Christian a year ago. And hey, I can tell the truth and prophesy over a pastor who's been ministering for 30 years. No, you can't. Maybe you can. There's a difference. God can use you 
God can use you as a young Christian for five minutes by the Spirit of God, but it doesn't mean that you're their equal. You've got to honor that person. There's a big difference. God can use me as a revivalist in this church like this, but it doesn't mean that I have a right and authority to boss your pastor around. That's not what it is. I have to honor the, man, honor the ministers because they've been to different places. Am I making sense? So the dream was a warning dream. And I know that when we have revival, when true spirit of Jesus shows up and God starts doing something, number one opposition will be a religious spirit. And the thing about this EDM dance, I make you jump and dance. Honestly, this is making, this is making you ridiculous. <laughs> I am, I am taking you to a place of making you look ridiculous before man so that our spirits are humble. Kind of like I'm, I'm putting the David cloak on you. you got to be like David. It's, it's kind of humbling for, for an 80-year-old, for a 70-year-old to be dancing like this, right? <laughs> it's humbling. But it, it breaks the religious spirit. I don't know. I, it, just, it just does. And then suddenly God heals people. So I believe as we dance today, there was healing that was being uh, released. So I love to hear any testimonies. If you've been sick before you came in, I, I, I believe you've been healed. Amen? But um, that was the warning of the Lord this morning. And um, so I think it's something that we need to pray about. But today I have a brief word, and then I'm going to continue to prophesy. Actually, no, before, so I forgot. Before we do it, can we take up a time, have a time of offering? I keep forgetting. The, the sowing in today that you'll be doing would be for the outpouring, so it will be for the revival. In case you didn't know, um, since January 1st, we have been in Los Angeles outpouring for, uh, we, we started with three days of revival. And you know, when God starts moving, people start talking in a good way. Like when God starts moving, Suddenly, people want to do something more. So I'm expecting that today, after the service, God will put something in your heart that you want something more. Amen? So in Los Angeles, I was planning on doing three days of uh, prophecy revival, just to prophesy over the new year. And in case, if you want to receive my 2023 prophecy journal, I created like a PDF ebook file where I recorded all the uh, words that God was giving me. It was so much, so I created a book. So if you want to receive that over your email, you might want to register and, and put ebook on there so uh, some of us from my ministry can send it to you. But uh, it's basically a compilation of what God said, and uh, I'm amazed at how some of those words are even coming to pass right now. But um, so we've been in... That revival for three days, it got extended to 10 days. And then it, I did another round of that for 12 days, had about a week of break. We had another 10-day break. And this is the phase three of Los Angeles outpouring because we felt like there was something different that God was doing. Because the, the, the anointing and the healing and the presence of God was so strong that in this 10 days, 12 days of revival, so many people were being healed of 10, 20 things in their lives. I mean, women were, they were just, God was doing so much that um, this is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. You know, it's kind of like Asbury where, you know, God is pouring out a desire to worship on these young people and they're not stopping. That's God, you know. And even in Los Angeles, I'm amazed at how, because when we, when I told the pastor of this uh, church in Filipino town, it's close to Bonnie Bray House, it's 10 minutes from Azusa Street, 10 minutes from Amy Silverman Pearson, um, temple, Angela's temple. I, I, a, a prophet friend of mine said, um, Pastor Song, if you extend the revival to, for 21 days, God's going to give you a stadium. So, you know, um, I kind of thought about it. <laughs> How can I extend for 21 days? You know? But um, I went home and I thought, you know what? I really should obey. I really should obey the word of the Lord. And so I said, uh, let's do 12 days straight. Revival every night, 12 days. But this is a church that I just met a month ago. So they, they have no reason to have 12 days straight. <laughs> I mean, I barely know them. And you know, Pastor Herman's part of a pastor of that church. They just met me, but God, God moved so mightily in his life that he's here already. But, you know, with 
senior pastor of Word International Church in Los Angeles. Imagine a guest revivalist tell, telling the pastor, can we do 12 days straight of revival in your church? <laughs> and when we talked about it, there was, hesi- of course, hesitation. So senior pastor and I, because I know he has a real heart for revival, but not everyone does. So he and I thought, you know what, Pastor Cheeto, if nobody comes because it's 12 days of glory, I'm going to stay in the presence of God. It'll be me leading worship. I mean, don't worry about worship teams. Don't worry about logistics, you know, don't. I will just, I'll just be there. And you and I can be there. You can lead worship. And then he was like, yeah, Pastor Song, I can lead worship one time. Yeah, I'll lead worship one time. So we thought it was like small. So three days before I flew, I told him. And I was not expecting anything. We were expecting a small gathering. And then he, call, he calls me and, oh, he says, Pastor Song, I think you need to uh, try to talk to my other pastors about this. <laughs> so we had a Zoom call. I cast the vision about it. And then people started moving. I mean, people started organizing. I was in shock because I flew into Los Angeles one day before 12 Days of Glory. I thought the volunteer spots were not full because it's 12 days and people are working. So we go to church at 5, at the church, and, and it's in the middle of uh, Koreatown, Filipino town, the most horrible gang activity, very dangerous. So somebody has to be security, and we have like security downstairs. and. It's a dangerous neighborhood where they, they do drugs and it's gang activity. So it's not safe. And I didn't think that people will volunteer. But the day before, I messaged the group and I said, hey, I will volunteer for food because we need pizza food for the staff. Well, soon, quickly, he said, Pastor Song, everything's filled. <laughs> parking, meaning outside ushers, parking, security, uh, worship team is all full. Food is all full. Everybody volunteered to provide food. It's all full. And I was like, wow, I can't believe it. And I don't know, I don't know, it was all full. So we just cruised into 12 Days of Glory, and we saw God do miracles every night. And um, uh, that was phase two. So every time I do these revivals, I walk in in the dark. So I came to Honolulu in the dark. Who would have thought I'll be here right now, right? And even like financially, right? We don't have a budget for a revival. And, and all these people were, oh, thank you for coming. But like, um, we had about three ladies, one lady who couldn't walk for 20 years started walking. Um, people, giving up their hearing aids because God opened their ears. People being healed of trauma and all sorts of things. The collection of testimonies, so much. And I'm going to have Pastor Herman come up and share his testimony. And uh, Pastor, Pastor John Paul, I declare total healing over you because I just say it with confidence, Pastor, because today afternoon I'm going to go to a church where a pastor is, uh, has cancer. And I, I came actually to pray for him because I believe he's going to be healed. You know, when God is with you, God, there's a season when you know God's going to do it. Because you know it wasn't you. But Pastor Herman got healed of diabetes. The senior pastor's wife, she had diabetes. I don't even know who has diabetes. <laughs> the healing was so much that I don't, I don't even know, the, know them. I don't even know all the names of the pastors. But they're being healed left and right. So they're now sharing. The pastor's wife, Pastor Tess, she, the day after the revival, she said, Pastor Song, And she told everybody her her numbers were normal. God healed her. And she didn't even expect it. So people are being healed just in the presence of God. So I don't even have to pinpoint, give you a word of knowledge, because God's healing you right now. What just happened in the five minutes ago with EDM, when you danced, deliverance was happening. I don't have to pinpoint. That's That's a move of the Holy Spirit, and I've seen this every time. Skeptics would come in, and moms would be... Because this is unusual. They judge me. You know, what kind of pastor does that? Why is she so jumpy? <laughs> She's jumpy. <laughs> she looks foolish. And the music is weird. <laughs> so in one of our, we did a big youth conference in Jeju Island in Korea. Whenever we do EDM, we have to have like 20 intercessors running around praying because so much spiritual activity. These moms came along on the youth camp. They were so mad. They were like this. And then soon after, during EDM, all the demons came out. They were on the floor. So uh, the older pastors had to drag them out and do deliverance on them. 
They repented because that's what happens. Yeah. But, you know, I just feel like this is an unusual season of God's outpouring. And another thing is, now Pastor Herman will tell you, because of this outpouring, what's happening is all their people who came to the revival for five days, 12 days, they are now operating like that. They are, they watch what I do and they do exactly what I do and God does exactly what he does. So I had a lady, her name is Pia. She was, in, she was very on fire for revival. And you know, you just have to be in the revival atmosphere to know in your spirit that this is different. Because you all have been to a lot of revivals, <laughs> I can tell. You, you know, you, you, you probably went to all the conferences you can think of. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> I was a revival junkie, I know. <laughs> I've been to Pensacola. I've been to Brown's. Well, I've Brown's been to Pensacola. I've been to Mike Bickle's ministry. I was at IHA. I mean, I was at any music revival I run, I go. As a, as a kid, I was up in Toronto. I know how, if, I, I know what it's like. But... Anyhow, so you have to physically be there to discern. You just can't really explain, right? But today, I am, I am pro- I'm praying that today you are feeling something different. And that's what people felt in Los Angeles. And they said, this is, we don't know what it is, but it just feels like it's beginning of a movement of some sort. And so this sister who uh, has a ministry in the Philippines, she was really on fire. She kept testifying like, Pastor Song, this, is, this feels different. This is the beginning of like one of those big charismatic movements. And um, she went back to Philippines and she put it in a group chat of our intercessor. She said um, she has a, a ministry there, but she's not a preacher like me. She just, I don't think she's ever like prophesied like that. But she said one of the Filipino pastors asked her to come and speak. She said, yes. She just started praying for people like I would like prophesy and lay hands. And all like it was like revival for them. So she was so grateful for and impartation, and I feel that that's another thing God's doing. And Pastor Herman will tell you that he's praying for people, and God, there's an overflow of what God can do. So that is uh, the outpouring that we're experiencing. We would pray that God would increase something here in Honolulu, and um, that it will continue as long as we say yes. So this is part of phase three of Los Angeles outpouring. So I just came here, and then I'm, I'm heading to Los Angeles. We're we still have a, a bit of a struggle finding a place, uh, but, you know, God will provide, and we will see what God does. But this is phase three of Los Angeles outpouring. You didn't know that, you know, but that's kind of the timeline of what's been happening. I took some breaks, and then I come back for phase three. And, and we're excited. We don't know exactly what the Lord's going to do, but we know that there's a powerful outpouring of the Holy Spirit for the last days. Amen? So, um, Pastor Herman, would you, can you come up, please? Your book. I want. I want. He came with his son Daniel um, from Los Angeles to help me with preparing. And so, can we give him a round of applause? <laughs> Tell us a bit of testimony of how, how this revival changed you and, and your book. Good morning. Good morning. So, well, you all look different now. <laughs> the room is much brighter. I guess that's how I felt. So day zero, before the outpouring started, uh, December 18, um, I was healed of my nerve damage on my hands and feet. I, you know, I had a placard on my car, disabled. Right, so, well, you saw what happened. And uh, that's become part of my personal worship routine and my prayer time. I will dance for 15, 20 minutes as my worship. And sometimes that's enough. Sometimes that's enough. Sometimes I go for an hour just jumping and, and worshiping God, and that's enough. Uh, for me, I, I, can't, I can't take it anymore. Not, not, not my legs, but I will fall. The spirit will, will overflow on me. I do fall uh, at home by myself. And then the Day one of the outpouring, oh, on day zero, my wife gets healed. She's in pain. Pastor, you might want to explain to them what day zero is. Yeah, day zero was when... So, <laughs> People uh, wouldn't know what day Pastor zero Pastor Song was guest, our guest uh, preacher on December 18 in our church. And she, she called out, she prayed over, over all, our, all, all our pastors, the staff. 
And, uh, and she called my wife. And she said, the spirit of death is gone. Because my wife felt she had five years to live because of her disease. Uh, she was, she's in pain 24-7 like because of the autoimmune disease. And uh, I, I cry every night. I, I have to put uh, pain lotion on all her joints every morning just to and pull her out of bed so she can work. Uh, but she was healed uh, on day zero. We were both jumping, so the guy who couldn't jump <laughs> and the girl who couldn't jump, we were, we were jumping, and I saw my son, she was like that. <laughs> he was shocked. Anyway, <clears throat> so I, there's so many things that got healed for, for me, so my diabetes went down, went out. I have uh, acid reflux. You know, you're 72, things go wrong with your body. It's gone. Uh, I have incontinence. I have to go to the, to the toilet every 45 minutes. That's gone. Uh, I was pretty aware for my liver issues and my heart issues. You know, I had a heart attack when I was 38. And uh, can I tell that story? You know, I'm a... As a young man, I was a high flyer. I mean, I wanted to succeed. I wanted to have lots of money. And I did. At 27, I was driving a Range Rover in 1978. Like it was the first SUV ever produced, the luxury SUV. That was my vehicle. And uh, so I would do anything for my, my unholy trinity. Power, money, and pleasure. Anything. Even selling my soul to the devil, which I did. Right? So I doubled in the occult and all those things. And then it was a high stress job. I remember in 1988, I spent uh, three months in Honolulu, in Honolulu, in LA, trying to conquer the market there for, for the Philippines, the Philippine company. And I went home on April. That's when I was having lunch with my, my managers. And uh, I thought I was going to burp. When I did, a sharp pain, like somebody stabbed me from the back to the front. And everything went dark. I, I saw myself falling to hell. And I said uh, in myself, this is it. Goodbye, world. And I knew it, it was coming. And in, at one point in my life, I didn't mind it. Because life was so empty. I had money, I had power, I could buy anything I want. But empty. I don't know what happened when I was falling. And I just prayed, Jesus saved me. And bam! Darkness gone, pain gone. But I was slumped on the table. I pushed myself up, and my, my managers were, were looking at me like that. And they rushed me to the hospital and diagnosed with a heart attack, but stable, so go home, come back in a week. When I got to the office, my phone rang. No cell phones then, 1988, maybe. Half of you weren't even born yet. <laughs> or you were babies. My private phone rang. It was Jesus. I thought it was Jesus because this was my, my younger sister. Hey, older brother, we have a family retreat this weekend, a spiritual retreat. We'd like you to come. I said, I'm going. Because I knew what happened. That's why it, it was Jesus. I sat down and the phone rang and I picked it up. Long story short, we had a family retreat. I gave my life to Jesus. April 24, 1988, and... Uh, I, they prayed over me for healing. I prayed, while I was being prayed over, I, I prayed, Lord, give me a new heart and I will serve you for the rest of my life. Friday, I went to the doctor. He was scratching his head. Mr. Atienza, I don't know. I made, I made, made a mistake diagnosing you because your heart is the heart of an 18-year-old. I grew younger 20 years. So that was my life. And... Uh, 
I got involved in business ministry immediately because that's what the God Lord wanted me to do. And, uh, you know, the, the business ministry is different. It's very academic. You have to have knowledge and, you know, neckties and all those things. And this ministry was strange to me. Uh, so when I, when I met uh, Pastor Song over, I was a reluctant attendee to the, to the revival because I was busy. I had to finish my book. A lot of things to do. On January 1st, she prophesied over me. She prophesied exactly what was my business plan for 2023. I'm a businessman, so I have a ministry to businessmen. That's what I do. But I learned to plan the future is to influence the future. So I, I'm a planner, so I had my 2023 plan, but I prayed. I strive to catch God's objectives for me, not my objectives for me, for the ministry. I was so happy that all the items I put in my business plan, in my ministry plan. She had prophesied, so I said, so it, this is going to happen. So I, I was so happy because for that particular plan, I was able to catch God's vision because it was confirmed. She didn't know me from Adam. So one day the Lord told me, okay, so this book is a story of Isaiah 64.4 which says God will work on your behalf. God will work on your behalf if you wait for God. Again, God will work on your behalf if you wait for God. That's my story. But God told me, you must give your life to the revival. I said, what about my ministry? Don't you teach that if you wait for me, I'll work for you. So I, I followed it. As I stand here today, 90% of my 2023 objectives are complete, finished. And I didn't do a thing because I was so busy with the revival for January. The phone, I mean, the, the Zoom just came up, kept on coming. I'm complete globally except for one, one I'm look, praying for somebody in China to be mentored for business discipleship. But as I saying, it's complete. It's all there. I was supposed to do two books this year. I already have one book finished. It's going to be published next week in Zimbabwe. It's finished. So I just have one more book to go. It's three-fourths finished. And I just do it in the spare time. Right? What I'm saying is the, the healing is there. Pastor Herman said one day he was slain in the spirit on the floor. He got up and he said, God just downloaded to me the book, right? Yeah. I mean, I was writing a book, but he changed the whole book. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's the book that's three or finished because of that download while I was on the floor. What I want to share is there's healing and there's Word of God. So she, Pastor Sam prophesied my business plan, it happened. So I'm free for the rest of the year. I'm done for that ministry. That's why I'm here. Because God worked for that ministry as I worked for this ministry. Because that's what he said. Wait for me. So when wait for me, he says, I got to follow you. Right? The other prophecy that was imparted to was uh, the gift of healing, which I had in a small small way in the 1990s. One day, uh, on the eighth day of the, no, sorry, on the 20th day of the revival, I received an, a message from my friend in Zimbabwe. He's a bishop and a businessman who I've been mentoring for about six months. And he said, I think I have cancer. I haven't told my wife. I need a miracle because I'm not finished with what I have to do for God's business and for my churches. There's 25 churches in five countries in Africa. 
So when I met him on Monday morning after the revival, my heart was heavy for him because he, he looked so downcast, like uh, his face was crumpled like, like a raisin. He's a big man, a big, strong man. And I said, uh, Bishop, well, how are you doing? He says, uh, I'm okay. And the Holy Spirit told me, pray for him, pray for him. It's Zoom. I said, look, Lord, it's Zoom. Pray for him. So, hey, Bishop, I'm going to hold your face here in the monitor. <laughs> and I'm going to pray for you. And I just, you know, the Holy Spirit says, uh, I will remind you of things that I have told you. In John, I remember that. So I remember Pastor Song. What does she say? So I just remember that and I just did that prayer. I remember Pastor Song will always say, How do you feel? I said, How do you feel, Bishop? But you know, his face was young. He said, I feel young. And all my pain in my body is gone. My pain in my throat, which is the cancer, it's gone. The lump is gone. I was just uh, crying. And he said, uh, can, I just, can we just end our meeting? We were just about 10 minutes into it because I want to pray. I want to pray too, said. So we broke off the meeting and me. It's been like that every day. Somehow all the, my clients would, would be sick. I'd pray they'd get healed. This woman from Spain, we just started maybe on our second meeting, and I shared, I, I shared that oh, there was supernatural weight loss because my wife, she's been losing weight. He said, Pastor, I gained a lot of weight because of medicine. I've been sick. Can you pray for me? I said, oh, no. <laughs> supernatural weight. But, but, but the Holy Spirit said, do it. Okay, Lord. So I prayed for her. And I asked her, how's your, your, your trousers? How are they? Well, they, be, they I don't know because it's, lo it's always been loose, but it seems looser now. So, okay, just claim the healing. And then she emailed me a couple of days later, Pastor Herman, I lost two kilograms. So she's claiming it. She's claiming it. So, so healing is now by Zoom. That's what I found out. And uh, uh, jumping and dancing has power. Believe me, it's got power. It fixes my days. Uh, and I just love it because I can jump. For 10 years, I couldn't jump. You know, I had a disability placard on my car. But <laughs> God does it. And uh, my encouragement to you is, uh, especially you, Pastor, that word will happen. I talked to Pastor Song. What do I do now? And she says, you have to press on it. You have to what do you mean press on it? You have to pray for it constantly and claim it and claim it and do something to step forward towards it. So every day, that's what, Lord, how do I step forward towards it? Every time I step forward, something happens. So I'm changing even now every day. Every day. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And whatever word was spoken to you, it's going to happen because... It, not only for me, it's happened to many in our church. And uh, praise God for Pastor Song. And praise God for you guys. You're brave. You're brave. <laughs> yeah, it's $20. <laughs> it's for the outpouring. Yeah, so if you want to purchase this book, it's for the outpouring. So you can do that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I think you already gave. So we'll just skip that part. If you want to... Um, so into the revival, so all the funding that you give is goes to the trip and also phase three of the revival. And um, I want I want to challenge you. Pray about the amount that God wants to show you. God wants you to sow into the outpouring. This isn't just to one ministry or to me, but it's for this work to continue. One of the reasons why I was, uh, this morning I got up and I had that dream that I think was a warning from the Lord. Um, it's about honor and dishonor, right? How the church dishonors. This is a deep sin in the American church. I would say maybe not so prevalent in the Korean church because Koreans learn how to honor. There's different things, but um, some of my friends, there's a, the movie out, Jesus Revolution. Is that out here too? Did you watch it? 
Yeah, yeah, you watch it. I mean, this morning I happened to, after that dream, I was disturbed, and then I happened to watch a YouTube video on Lonnie Frisbee. On his, one of his best friends was telling the in-between story of what really happened with Lonnie Frisbee. And um, I just want to say this, because it, God just kind of put it in my heart to watch it. So I, I didn't watch the whole thing. It was very long. But one part really stood out to me was that Lonnie was a catalyst of revival. He was a young man who didn't know what he was doing, really. <laughs> he was a hippie. I didn't watch Jesus' Revolution, but I've heard his name before. I didn't even know how God used him. But basically, he was young. He was broken. He, was, he had a very broken past. He was molested as a child. Um, but he was 19, and he was broken, but God still used him as a catalyst. Well, when in his struggles to get his life together, and these movements like Calvary Chapel, even the vineyard, I didn't even know that. So this friend is telling about how he was going from one movement, Calvary Chapel, he kind of disconnected with them and went to a different movement, um, shepherding movement where Derek Prince was, and that, that movement actually kind of destroyed him because they were trying to discipline him, and it just didn't, it, it just didn't work. And so he, he kind of, um, his marriage fell apart. And then the next movement was the Vineyard Movement. He came back to Southern California. But he said, um, he, j he asked the leaders of the church there, I really feel like God's telling me to go around the world to preach the gospel. But the thing is, he didn't have money. So the point was, he didn't have money. So he asked them if they can support him. Um, of course, the Holy Spirit can support a, a, a young missionary who wants to go preach the world. But the moral of the lesson, that I was just listening to it, but basically the point was that people who, who were birthing revivals because of Lonnie Frisbee's, he was a catalyst. But basically all these people did not properly honor, properly honor him in multiple ways. That's what I was hearing. And it really broke my heart. They treated him like a, like a broken person. But I thought I reversed the thought about, would this be possible in like a Korean church? Well, first of all, Korean pastors will never let a 19-year-old influence them. <laughs> right? I mean, that, this could probably would not happen. But if this person was a little older, if you had a catalyst of revival who ushered in the Holy Spirit, if you had like somebody like Catherine Coleman, would you spit her out? Because she's got issues, you know. It kind of got me thinking about it. And what it's like all these movements got denominationalized, had multiple churches, and these big guys became like church leaders, and they probably had tons of money. And they, the, the fact that they didn't support Lonnie's small, Lonnie, Lonnie Frisbee, it, it just kind of, it, it was just a disturbing morning before I got here today. <laughs> and I think it's the Lord just kind of speaking to me about this. It's a religious spirit. Now that you're well established, how could you dishonor this person who God used to birth? And even the story of like Vineyard Movement, how it happened, John Wimber uh, to asked Lonnie Fujby to come and do one meeting, and his best friend is saying, Lonnie, John Wimber has no idea what he's asking for because, <laughs> because everywhere Lonnie Frisbee goes, like bomb blows off, like Holy Spirit comes. All he says is, do not dishonor the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. Holy, he would say, Holy Spirit, come, and it would really come. How powerful. So I, don't, I haven't seen the movie, but were you guys really moved by that? Yeah. Did they portray Lonnie Frisbee well? Yeah, yeah. Well, I haven't seen it, but the, the whole whole life is just kind of heartbreaking, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. But the, 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 I haven't seen the movie, so I have nothing to say about it. But the thing is, like, the, um, you know, and so when Lonnie went to, John Wimber's church, and <laughs> just a small, small meeting, but he's the Holy Spirit comment. So much of God happened that um, John Wimber got really upset. So, so I just want to tell you, with this outpouring in Los Angeles, there are some pastors that are really upset, and I'm really used to that. <laughs> well, if you want to discern whether or not something is a true revival, there will be somebody that's really mad at you somewhere, and they will start persecuting you, talk bad about you, something. And so... 
it was about how like at the beginning, like John Wimber, even John Wimber was a bit upset because he couldn't. It was just he couldn't control it. It was the Lord, you know. But it, it really broke my heart to hear about how he didn't have that full support of the body of Christ. Yeah. So I just bring that up. Maybe the Lord is challenging you, Hawaii. If you want an outpouring in Hawaii, pray about gathering resources to continue it. Because I'm telling you, somebody has to give and sacrifice. Like this, when the late church in Los Angeles that hosted for 12 days, it wasn't. All these people bring. It was like the Book of Acts. I'm telling you, when Holy Spirit comes, it's like Book of Acts. People were bringing their food. People were bringing gifts. People were honoring honoring me, and if they were genuinely honoring me. And they were saying thank you, and they were bringing things. And, it, it, and that's why we have to, when you usher in the Holy Spirit, we have to stop complaining about, well, God, why are you not coming? It's because you're not, you're not honoring the Holy Spirit. It's easy to usher in the Holy Spirit if you truly honor the Holy Spirit. If you truly want something and you pour into it, God will come. And that's the lesson that I see God wants to give us, even for the Asbury revival, is that they said yes to ushering. In the, they just said yes and started worshiping. That's it. Left the door open for 24 hours. Not only God came, everybody else came. <laughs> when you think about it, it's easy. What if God, we had all these churches that were open for 24-7? Churches. And allow God to usher in and us sacrificing our schedule, changing our agenda. See, that's the thing about Pastor Herman's testimony. I didn't hear it like this. Thank you for sharing. It's very moving. So... Literally, those people that came to 22 Nights of Revival, their lives completely changed. <laughs> like from a DNA level, it's just, it's just been very powerful for me to watch how God can completely change. And you'll have to ask them, but I, I've seen a lot of moves of God. I've seen a lot of like shaking and falling and growling or whatever. You know, I've seen a lot of those things. But what was distinctive about this, God was literally changing people from the DNA level. I saw how the power of God was going very deep. And their testimony, like their life completely changed. It wasn't just that you felt something. See, the testimony isn't like, well, when Pastor Song prayed for me, I felt something. That, it's not that, that shallow. Even like, oh, I got healed from my arthritis. No, it's not that shallow. So today's word I have for you is Isaiah 61. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim freedom for the captives. You know this chapter, right? One to seven. So I want to say a few things before I start ministry. Number one, there is a purpose in the infilling of the Holy Spirit. So I want to tell you, see, there is a reason why God is pouring his spirit on you right now. How many of you felt something different overnight? Yesterday you were at the meeting. Tonight you woke up feeling different. Yeah. Tell me what, what you felt. Come on up. Come on up. I want me to give, give her a clap. Tell us what God did last night. Because a lot of times people feel it the next day. What did the Lord do for you yesterday? I had the best sleep ever. And I felt completely lighter. Everything like the thing you prayed, um, Pastor prayed for me, that there was something um, lifted off my shoulder. Mm. And I've always had tension on my neck and my back, mm. and it's gone, and I feel like it's gone forever. Amen. Okay. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've been hearing so much of people sleeping well <laughs> overnight. So many people. Yeah. How, how, who else want to testify? What did God do for you? Anybody else? Come on up. Come on up, tell us, tell us your name also, where you're from. <laughs> what did the Lord do for you? My name is Diana Bingo. I live in Kailua. Last night, I couldn't jump or hardly walk. I had a hard time getting up the stairs because I really slammed my foot into the wall. I had a big bruise in black and blue. And um, so last night, uh, when I left, my foot was better. I could walk down the stairs better, but this morning I can jump. Wow. So, yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> There's a little bit of pain, but it's almost gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Anybody else have any testimonies? Well, you know, just expect more. I want you to bring the sick tonight, too. Uh, who, wants, who wants this to be your testimony? Who wants life changed? Who wants, you know, and then, you know, the Lord told me for 12 Days of Glory song, I'm going to kick that devil out, the mental illness. 
I'm going to give my people the right, right mind. And I know that is the battle. We are in a spiritual battle. So we got to divorce the pharmacia. Medicine is not going to do it for you. Jesus, the healer, this is a, he, it's a very unique kind of healing movement that's coming. And God is going to equip you as healers too. Man of God, what's your name? Gary, Gary God's going to use you as a healing evangelist. There's a revival fire that you carry. You've been waiting for a very long time. I see like 30 years of waiting. You've been frustrated. You've met a lot of revivalists. They disappointed you. But you're like a father. You're gracious to them. But God says, I am pouring my spirit upon you. You are going to minister. Huh? You're going to be like Pastor Herman. I just see acceleration. Something that Pastor Herman shared, there's something that's birthed in your spirit. Oh, God, I want that. I want my life changed. God says, my son, I've heard your prayers. You're a prophet. You're a prophet. You're a seer. God's given you dreams and revelation about the last days. I have stationed here, you here in Honolulu for a reason. But there's been a stifling, there's been a blockage, there's been religious people who blocked you, who are secretly against you. You have enemies, but I will deal with your enemies, says the Lord. Father, pour out your spirit upon this man right now. I am pleased with you. I'm giving you triple portion, not double, but triple. Number three is a prophetic number for you. 2023 will be a year of Psalm 23. And number three, this is phase three of Los Angeles outpouring. God's going to give you travel tickets to go here and there. You're going to travel. You're going to be a traveling revivalist, a healing evangelist in Jesus' name. I bless you, man of God, right now in Jesus' name. Amen. I would say what happened to Pastor Herman's family was a, was a Holy Spirit acceleration. You know, Holy Spirit accelerates. He transcends time. It's like human effort. We need like two weeks to get something done, but God can just do it in one second. The takeaway of his testimony is that he had all these things that he had to do, but because the Holy Spirit, revival comes, and it just happens overnight, right? Holy Spirit transcends time. What takes two years to heal you, but the Holy Spirit, it's instant. So we, we, are, we are in a different realm of what God can do. It's like that's the revival. God wants to take you up, and if you want it, I believe that's what God's going to do in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. What's, what was your name? 한국 분이시죠? 하나님께서 보여주시는 것은 우리 어, 자매님에게 집사님이신가요? 권사. 자매님, 아, 오케이. 자매님에게 하나님께서 재정의 은총을 주신다는 마음 주셨습니다. 하나님께서 재정의 문을 열어주시는데 뭔가 굉장히 재정적으로 지혜가 있으시고 뭔가 사업가의 기름 부으심이 있으신데 그러, 어, 사업가의 기름 부으심이 있으신데 그것들을 어, 악한 영이 자꾸 훔쳐가고 또 정확하게 킹덤과 얼라인 하지 않아서 그러니까 하나님의 나라와 그거를 이렇게 정렬을 시켜서 일을 해야 되는데 그동안 많이 이렇게 옆에서 사람들이 자꾸 자매님을 괴롭히고 막 이리 끌고 저리 끌고 하는 컨트롤링 스피릿들이 있는 게 보였어요. 근데 하나님께서 말씀하시기를 상한 나에 따라 내가 너에게 지혜를 주고 내가 너에게 방향성을 줄 것이니 네가 나의 나라와 부흥을 위해서 헌신하고 나아갈 때 내가 너에게 네가 상상하지도 못하는 놀라운 이들을 관리하게 할 것이다. 요셉의 기름 부으심이 부어지고 있습니다. 하나님께서 내가 너를 여성 요셉으로 세웠으니 너에게 있었던 모든 어, 거절감과 와와 야라라라바시 가족들의 거절감 거절감이 너무 많았는데 하나님께서 그 거절감을 내가 축복 으로 바꿀 것이며 너를 외면했던 사람들이 너에게 구해 달라고 찾아오는 그 요셉의 모멘트 같은 순간들이 올 것이다. 하나님 말씀하십니다. 요셉의 형제들이 패밀리 왔을 때그 어, 고난이 왔을 때 요셉에게 와서 나 우리를 살려달라고 한 것처럼 가라라 주님이 요셉으로 지금 키우고 계십니다. 사랑하는 나에 따라 내가 너를 잊지 않았노라 하나님 말씀하십니다. 심장병을 고쳐주고 계시고 쉐바라라바 시가다다다다다 헤이야랄라이 요로라바 시가다다 Break that chain in Jesus name 예수를 명령하노니 모든 거짓 어, 끈들은 끊어질 지어다 모든 가, 조종하는 끈들은 끊어지며 성령의 불로 채워질 지어다 뼈를 맞춰 주시옵소서 이 딸을 축복하여 주시옵소서 샤바라라바 시가다다 in Jesus name amen and amen hallelujah what's your name Diane father is saying that he's releasing greater healing upon you and he's going to use you as a healer go pray for people even in the markets even the groceries people are going to start talking to you about what they're suffering of and I see a mother anointing a, a listener's anointing it's like you will listen to people suffering but you will give them solutions give them Jesus father I thank you that she is an evangelist a healing evangelist I just impart that upon this woman of God right now I bless you I bless you I bless you the sufferings of your family the disconnect the miscommunication that God is dealing with it God is saying there's been a snake spirit slithering spirit around your family members people misunderstand one another one another or intentions are misunderstood but God is saying I'm breaking it 
I'm giving you love and unity. God has heard your prayers. Oh, she got the heartache is lifting off of you. You've been secretly crying in the uh, closet because it's just brought so much pain in your heart. But God says, I'm restoring love, love, love. My daughter, remember that I love you. She got the heal her heart right now in Jesus' name. I just bless her. I just bless her. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name, anoint her, anoint her, anoint her. A fresh, a fresh new anointing is coming upon you. The gold is gone. Karaba, do not regret your past because I have given you those suffering experiences to build you up for the future. You have still many days ahead of you. I rebuke this despair, this spirit of death over her. She, there's fear that comes into her about her future. I just cancel in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. What is your name? Yeah, come on up. I'm going to pray for you. Yeah. What's your name? Virginia, the Lord is saying that, come on, I need help. I need help. Quickly. Quickly, I need help. Yeah, I need help. Anoint her, anoint her. Power, power, power. I break the word curses off of you in Jesus' name. The self-curse, the self-sabotaging spirit. When every good thing comes, you think that it's for other people and not for you, but God says, receive it, it's for you. I see you in a center stage. There are people that took your spotlight and you always felt like you were sidelined, but God is saying you are the center of my attention. You're the apple of my eye. There's a love revolution coming, love revival coming to your heart and spirit. You felt like God rejected you. You were asking God, what is it that I did wrong or what is it that I need to repent of? Search my heart, oh God, but God says, I love you. You have been a woman of integrity. You have been honest before me. People have misunderstood you, but I'm giving you love and restoration of all things that were lost in Jesus' name. Pour it out, pour it out, receive it, receive it, pour it out, power. I break the sabotaging spirit off of you. The attacks of the enemy, the darts of the enemy that come, false accusations, stop in Jesus' name. Every gaslighting spirit, twisting of words, I break it off in Jesus' name. God is setting you free. I set you free from not being able to speak. I feel like there's something over your voice. There's like a, like almost like a Enemy try to uh, stop you from talking or speaking your voice, but I release you to speak in Jesus' name. It was just receive it, receive it in Jesus' name. Yeah. Power, power, power. Fill her up right now. What, are you, are you, how are you feeling? Um, just feeling weak. Feeling weak. Uh, Do you have any physical concerns about what you need healing um, for? I, uh, I had some girl surgery in 2015 to remove fibroids from the fallopian tube and cervix. And at, at one time, my OBGYN said, some endometriosis, but I continue to just say no to all of that. Metabolism, I used to have like kind of high calcium in my metabolism blood work, mm -hmm. but God seems to be keeping it at bay, mm -hmm. but I will take any healing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lord, I just pray for, yeah, I just pray for total healing of every internal organ, everything that is off balance, be set into full balance of God now in Jesus' name. Shh. Father, in the name of Jesus, this self-sabotaging spirit comes from, uh, yeah, your idol worship in your family line. We break it. We break it. We break it. Power now in Jesus' name. Fill her up. Let her know that God, she's a new creation in Jesus Christ today. Shh. There's a creative anointing that is being released. You have been um, blocked in your creativity. God is even uh, helping you to, uh, your brains to function better. I see like left brain, right brain combined together. There's been a blockage in the way that you think. I break this mental illness, this confusion. There's been a lot of confusion in you. I bind it in Jesus' name. The spirit of confusion is not of God. Clarity of mind now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, well, you claim it in Jesus' name. <laughs> now, then, like all of you, I mean, if you all keep asking me to... <laughs> no colon cancer in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. 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 What's your name, sir? Olaf. Olaf. And, and are you... That's my oh, that's your wife. Olaf. Oh, okay. Were you here last night? Oh, you weren't here last night. How'd you come today? Oh, you know Bob. Okay. Olaf, let me pray for you. 
Get your phones ready if you want to record. Actually, all three of you, why don't you come up? Well, I've seen you sailing a boat, a ship, and I feel that God is saying, I'm going to use you as a Holy Spirit sailor. You have a real tender heart for the Holy Ghost. Fill him up. But you've lost your first flame, and there's a lot of religious people that discourage you. And I just break that off in Jesus' name. There's been some uh, religious figures or even pastors who really uh, try to control you or use you. But God is saying, I'm resetting your relationships. There's a new set of people that I will connect you with. And the Lord's going to use you to disciple a lot of other men around you. I see, um, I see you being in the helicopter and going to different islands and looking at different uh, geographies, something about land that you are able to see through uh, different things. And God's going to give you wisdom and revelation about territorial spirits. There's been some backlash against you because you, you kind of go out of your way to take a look and you're, you're aware of the spiritual realm. And some of your uh, friends don't understand that. You've been in a place of loneliness spiritually, but God is saying, I'm giving you friends, companions in the spirit, people who will understand you. So, Father, fill them up, even healing, anointing upon these hands. Power, power, power now in Jesus' name. Yeah, I just feel the Lord filling you up right now. Receive it, receive it now in Jesus' name. There it is. Just receive. Father, I pray for total healing from the physical conditions, any physical conditions he has of sickness. I see God healing your gastric condition, something about digestive system and absorbing of nutrients that hasn't been functioning very well. God is saying, I'm cleansing you. There's like a cleansing power, God, that's coming upon you right now in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Father, I thank you for this woman of God. I pray for the power of God to come upon her in Jesus' name. Fill her up. Let her know that she's a powerful intercessor in the Lord, that God's heard her prayers. God is setting you fire now. He's just giving you a fiery intercessory anointing upon you right now in Jesus' name. Father, I break every stronghold that's around, your, uh, around her physical home. I just feel like there's um, strongholds around your house different religions and even witches and warlocks around your house and god is saying i'm dealing with them i'm breaking them as you drive them even your your family is going to even be used to save some of them they will receive jesus because of your family so i just declare that over you in jesus name there's greater favor that's coming upon you you're like esther so i just bless you in jesus name amen what's your name Sydney, Father, I thank you for Sydney. The Lord is releasing a fresh anointing of creativity upon this woman. I see like a business mantle that is coming upon you. Creative business and social media, something that has to do with different social media. And innovation is the word for you. God is saying, I'm giving you innovative anointing right now in Jesus' name. But the Lord's going to move you to different places. I see you traveling and I see you being connected to global businesses. And this is a place where you come back to, but I see you going to different places. So I just bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's your name? I pray for you, right? Didn't I pray for you yesterday? No? Did I not pray for them yesterday? <laughs> no? Not everyone? I did not. Okay, what's your name? Uh, Timothy. Timothy. Timothy, God is, or is this? Timothy, the Lord is saying to you that he is going to give you a double portion. He's going to spark an interest in you for the gospel. Like I see a flame coming up in, from in, within your spirit. Like Jesus is going to capture your heart. <laughs> Jesus is going to capture your heart. A spark. Fire, 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 spark, power. And Jesus. Hey, you're going to be at the center of revival. You and your friends. How old are you? Yeah, you and your friends are going to be in the center. of. How old are you? Yeah, Father, I pray. Are you brothers? Yeah, Father, I pray for just, a, just igniting a fire in these young ones right now in Jesus' name. Capture them, capture them, capture them. You guys are going to be at the center of revival. You're going to be at the center of revival. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Fire, fire in Jesus' name. Amen. Man of God, what's your name? Caleb, yeah. Caleb, um, the Lord is strengthening you right now. Your weakness is not 
your weakness. Give it to the Lord because he's going to turn it around for you. I just feel like you felt very weak in the Lord. You weren't quite sure what it means to have strong faith. But God says, rely on me. You will learn how to lean on him. Lean on Jesus. It's not about me. It's about the Lord. And God, God can lead you when you just lean on him. And you feel like you had to do something for the Lord. But God says, no, you are already a living sacrifice. So take that pressure off of you. In Jesus' name, I just bless you. I just bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there is a purpose in God filling you with the Holy Spirit because it's a harvest time. Now, how much do you, do you want business as usual? <sighs> do, you want, do, you, do, you, do you want revival? You know, I was, just, I was just sharing with some of the intercessors. I said, pray that, that the revival community of Los Angeles, and I don't even, I'm not saying a particular church. When I say revival community, it's not one church. The coming harvest has to be a network of different churches. We have to link arms. It's not about one pastor. It's a massive thing, right? So I, I, I told the intercessors, pray that the revival community of Los Angeles, I don't even know who they are, but that they will not reject it. They will not, they will not make it difficult for, for the Lord to move by dishonor, division, giving me a hard time. I mean, imagine if I can't go, I can't go. If they're, if they're going to trample on me and abuse me, I'm not going to go. And I, I, my, and I think maybe that's why I was watching Lonnie Frisbee. It really broke my heart because his friend was saying, at some point, Lonnie really felt used and abused by the church, by others. And, I, I, and as, a, as a revivalist, I mean, I, I don't know about you, Pastor Bob, but as a traveling revivalist, sometimes we feel that way. Because churches ask me to do things that fits their vision. They love the anointing. They love the healing. So they'll all come to get prayer from you. And then something's ignited, but then they chew you out. So it just kind of, it was kind of like a, like a warning for me. Pray that, because why does revival happen in one place and it doesn't happen in the other? It's very easy. It's kind of like Nineveh. It's kind of like Nineveh, right? Prophet came and prophesied uh, judgment and they repented and God restored. So if Honolulu wants revival, there has to be uh, something imparted in your spirit. And I bless you to hunger for more. But I bless you to hunger for more and not for more of big conferences. That's not what you want. <laughs> that is not. <laughs> you don't want that. <laughs> too much of a headache. Too much conference fees. <laughs> you did have to register for this one just because we want to send out emails in case things change. But, you know, con how many of you know conference does not equal revival? <laughs> Even if you call a conference a revival, it does not equal that. And I, I, I believe that God is breaking the conference mindset. <laughs> what is it about conference? It's not just conference mindset. It's the business mindset. Are you doing your church as a business? I mean, there are people that are anointed to be businessmen. And there are apostles who are totally like a businessman. My father was like a businessman. He was brilliant. But he was also a brilliant shepherd. He ran the church finances like a businessman. He was incredibly brilliant. He made a 100-member church into, in a little, ding, little, little town in Seoul. He brought them to Gangnam, which is the wealthiest place. He built a church, and then he moved to another. He, he, he built an empire with lots of money, but he never took a dime from it. He made the church rich, and then he passed. Lots of pastors used to admire him and say, Pastor Bay, how do you do it? And my dad would tell them, I just go up to a mountain and I watch. I look. That was how I was just he was brilliant, but he, he, there is such thing as a business mind that God anoints, but that's different. But, but if you are, you, you are treating your church like a business, judgment will come upon you. You didn't catch that. <laughs> that was a big word I just said. You, a judge, this is also, God said 2023 is a year of judgment. 
Woo, fear of God. God said it's a year of judgment. God is judging. God is up there. He's, he's done. He's done with it. He's finished. I've been to all sorts of conferences that, that have words like unity, and the conference speakers hate each other. <laughs> You're there for the show. Oh, I've been to a lot of shows. I've been to a lot of shows. I was honored with my own water bottle. You know, I, got, I was part of the show. But at the back room, they hate each other. They don't even, you know, they don't even talk to each other because they're, they're suspicious of each other. They're secretly in competition with one another. They're angry, right, Pastor Bob? If somebody else takes the glory, somebody else, when somebody else's book sells better than mine... Or like, the crowd seems to like this person more than me. They get mad. That's a conference business mindset. Secret competition, jealousy. And this morning, God said, warn people of this Cain spirit that is going to try to kill Abel's sacrifice. You all really need to pray in tongues and receive this word because I'm speaking some really strong words. I've been to a lot of shows. I was invited to a lot of big shows, too. And I was among the who, who you know, in, this is in Korea, you know, like, do this. But behind the scenes, I know exactly what's going on. I know exactly that 90% of them hate me. It's a spiritual thing. They don't even say hello to you. But right now, you all need to pray for America because God judgment is coming upon those who self-proclaim to, they call themselves apostles, prophets. So don't call me an apostle and prophet. Only God knows. I don't need that title. I don't need you to tell me. That that's who I am. You got to be free from it. I don't need you to tell me, oh, she's a, she's a prophet. She's a revivalist. I really don't care. But judgment is coming upon those who call themselves a revivalist, but they're bringing business into the church. So Jesus is about to flip the tables. <laughs> He's about to flip the tables. And I speak to you these words in fear of God. And self-reflection, because I know I can't be, I, I have to check myself daily. Lord, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? What's in my heart? But the Lord's already revealed this spirit of competition. Well, so that person's calling this an outpouring revival. She thinks she's doing revival. Let me do the same thing. <laughs> Let me do it better. I mean, we had a lot of copycats. Hey, Pastor Song's doing that street worship thing. Oh, she's doing the EDM thing. I'll just, I'll do this exact same thing that she's doing. And I'll tell everybody that I'm doing it too. Why? And then you ghost one another. You don't even talk to each other. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So this is the, 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 the sin of dishonor and disunity that's in the circle, in churches. Lord, we repent of these things right now in Jesus' name. And I, I pray that God, you will check our hearts. That we're, what we are seeking is not another big event or conference, but we want a revival. So that is what I'm bringing to you. Do you want revival in this city? Do you want God to do something? What if I told you he can do something if you're willing? If you're willing. For some of the pastors, you need to lay down your church. I heard from Pensacola when the revival happened in Brownsville. They had, of course they had their Sunday schedule, but Jesus came so uh, when I visited towards the end of their revival, I was in my 20s, one of the ladies in their church invited me to their house because I didn't have anywhere to stay. They're very friendly. So she, made, she helped me stay at her house, and she was explaining to me the background story of the Pensacola revival. She was just a regular member of the church. And she, she was telling me about how when Pensacola started happening, every night they had revival, and people would line up at like 7.30 in the morning to get in the church. And uh, she said... They, 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 they could not have regular church any longer. Everybody in their church had to become staff. Ushers, parking attendants, cleaners. Who's going to do it? Who's going to be the catcher? So suddenly their church became an uh, event host. <laughs> but imagine doing that every night. No regular small groups. Every night they're... So she said they, they just gave it all up. For revival, remove God. And that's why they were so hospitable. When a stranger like me came, she just took me in. Because they were so used to having guests in their house. But it was, it was fascinating to see the background story of it. 
And just like what's really fascinating for me with what happened in January when LA was voluntary spirit. That's what the Holy Spirit does. When people know that there's something God's going to do, they, they bring their things. Oh, we will feed you. We got the food covered. And they all volunteer. And there's a whole back, back room operation that goes on that people don't know about for a meeting to happen, right? But the reason why I bring this up is, do you want revival in Honolulu? It, it's up to you. If you want it, God will bring it. And I, I hear the Lord saying, for every nation, though it's not because God doesn't want to come, it's because we don't want it. It's just like the prophetic word God gave me about uh, reunification of North and South Korea. God, when I was in my, in my early 20s and the 30s, when I was very passionate about North Korea, the Lord said, I'm not giving you reunification, not because of North Koreans, it's because of the South Koreans. Because South Korean church does not want it. They don't want to share their wealth. They're selfish. So that is why it's not happening. So you are to call South Koreans to repent. They're not ready. And this is even a now word right now, Pastor. You know exactly. This is why we need an invasion of the Holy Spirit in the Korean Peninsula. Koreans are in sin. Why is a church dwindling? It's because we become selfish, wealthy. South Korean Christians, they don't want to take on North Korea because it would mean temporary poverty for a while or wealth. Or if the door opens, South Korean greedy people will go in there and overtake all North Korea. God doesn't want that. But I'm telling you, when God pours out his spirit, it's for a purpose of harvest. Amen. And for Hawaii, I hear this word from the Lord on this Isaiah 61, that he wants to rebuild the ancient ruins. And I saw today as I was preparing, I saw worship altars all across Hawaii that God was going to build. The key to revival and transformation of Hawaii would be building worship altars, altars of worship all across Hawaii. That's what God wants. God wants to release worshipers. It's a worshiping army, and these worshipers will be building altars of worshiping Jesus all across places where there were altars of demons, altars of sacrifice, human sacrifice. So that's what I saw. God wants to rebuild it. And the Lord said, it's a year of double. Verse 7, instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion. Instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. God says he will, uh, he will bring double instead of your shame. And to this church, Global Revival Church, I prophesy over you, the enemy tried to put shame on you, but God is breaking it. There's a double portion of honor that is being restored upon this church in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen and amen. Yes. Pastor Joshua, I have a prophetic word for you. I want you to stand up. God showed me. You can, you can come up with your wife, actually, if it's okay. Mm. I want to pray for them. Can you help? I just want to bless them. The Lord is saying to you, man of God, that you felt like you've missed it. You felt like you missed your opportunity. You felt like it's too late. You feel like, did I miss my prime time? What am I doing? You've been in confusion, but I break it off in Jesus' name. This is a launching path for you. There's a big future that is ahead of you. There are regrets. You're like, oh, did I make the wrong choice? Am I in the right place? Is this what, what God has for me? But God says, no, my son, I have greater things for you. God is preparing you to start uh, overseeing churches in North Korea. There's something with North Korea that God's going to send you back to. I break the confusion off of you in Jesus' name. I break the self-sabotaging spirit, the shame that you put on yourself. The enemy tried to put cloak of shame on you. I break it off in Jesus' name. The Lord says you are a leader. He's going to sharpen your leadership. I see you even bringing a network of people like you, pastors like you, that you're not alone, says the Lord. You're an overcomer. When you overcome, it's almost like ministry depression. It's kind of like Elijah. When he was very depressed, he was in a cave. And God knows that you've been in a dark season, a waiting season. And some people tricked you, kind of like Jacob, when the, when the uncle tricked him. You thought you came for a promise, but, but your uncle, your own, your own relative, your own bloodline, your own people, they tricked you. And you had to work extra hard. There was a delay. But God says, my son, I will bring justice. 
You're entering into a season of new justice. Even in the next six months, you're going to experience justice. You felt like this land of America tricked you. This assignment tricked you. But my son, I've seen your hard work. You've, there's added suffering that you went through in the past season. It means that there's added blessing that's coming. A double portion that no one can deny. I break the, the confusion. I pray for favor. All the authority figures that tricked you, that, that made you feel insignificant, they will repent before God. I see fear of God coming upon them. Because you have been humble. You've humbled yourself before the Lord, and you've brought it to the Lord in prayer. God says, I've seen it. There's financial repayment that's coming, even financially. And I saw, like, different papers and documents that need to be sorted out. And God says, I've got this. I've got this. I've got this. All the, all the complications will be taken care of. The attacks will be canceled in Jesus' name. And my son, I will give you a sign that is undeniable. I will operate through you the power of the Holy Spirit. You are, Holy Ghost, a powerful man of God. And there's been an attack of Jezebel against you. Fill him up again. Fill him up again. People will not recognize you because of the power that's coming out of you. You will heal people left and right. You will preach the gospel to the nations. God's going to even accelerate your language skills. In different languages, God's going to send to the Muslim nations as well. I see the dark places in Muslim nations, I, Arab, uh, like uh, Arabian nations, people of dark skin color. You're going to speak the truth to them. You're going to break things off of them. God says, my son, I'm pleased with you. Do not ever doubt my pleasure over you, says the Lord. Hey, yada, I break the orphan spirit in Jesus' name. Spiritual orphan spirit that has been haunting this family, feeling like there's nobody to look up to. God says, my son, I will raise you up as a father of nations, as an apostle. I will bring youth, young people under your covering, and you will cover them in prayer and intercession because you've kept your heart pure and holy before me, says the Lord. Karaba. Unexpected places, financial support will come from unexpected places woman of God, God is healing you from the battle of wounds, from the long suffering. You have been in dark place, but God says, I love you. 하나님께서 이 시간에 완전히 신원하여 주고 계십니다. 그 마음에 하늘 풀어주시고 억울함을 풀어주고 계십니다. 사랑한 나의 따라, 네가 왜 외로워하느냐 너에게 사명이 있는 것을 네가 알지 못하느냐 너의 남편만 사명이 있는 것이 아니라 너에게도 사명이 있다라 말씀하십니다. There is a calling upon a woman of God. You are called by God. She got out of Father, birth intercession. Reopen Open the wells of prayer in this family line in Jesus' name. Oh, uh, 마치 우물이 막힌 것처럼 오랫동안 막혀 있었는데 그 막힌 우물이 열릴지어다. 나사렛 예수를 명령하노니 막힌 것들이 완전히 열릴지어다. 하 불로 불로 채워 주시옵소서. 가라라바 시가라라바 가 질투하는 악한 영혼 떠나갈 지어다. 이 딸의 어떤 재능으로 나서 주변에서 질투하는 모든 것들은 떠나갈 지어다. I bless you to walk in the fullness of everything that God has for you. Enjoy life, for I will give you more joy and brightness of life. There's bright light that's coming upon you. You're coming out of your dark tunnel in the name of Jesus. 어두운 그런 터널에서 이 시간 나 you're coming out better. But I break depression. I break every symptom of darkness in Jesus' name. I break it off of you now in Jesus' name. Fire, fire, fire. In Jesus' name. Power, power, power. Heal her right now. Power of God. Healing. Raise. Like laser beam of Holy Ghost is healing you. He's doing a heart surgery over you right now. In Jesus' name. I break off shame. I break off the... Memories of the past. 과거의 모든 트라우마와 과거의 안 좋은 기억들까지도 주님 치유해 주시고 아야라라바 시가라라바 초자연적인 쉼을 주시옵소서 가라라바 하와이의 남들은 쉬러 오는데 우리 사모님은 쉬지도 못하고 이렇게 쉼이 없었던 것이 보이는데 하나님께서 말씀하시기를 사랑한 나이더라 남이 알지 못하는 그 쉼을 내가 너에게 줄 것이니 넌 예배하여라 이 가족은 예배하는 패밀리입니다. I bless you. Spirit of worship. Worship is your breakthrough. Worship is your breakthrough. New sound. New songs. God is giving you new songs, man of God. 새로운 노래를 부르시게 되고 새로운 작사를 하시게 될 것입니다. Power, power, power. New songs, new songs in Jesus' name. Hoshekaraba, kewayarala in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. More, 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 more. Break that off in Jesus' name. Unlock the doors in Jesus' name. Open. Open. 가라라. 막힌 것들은 열리 치어다. 시가라. 영이 막힌 것들은 열리 치어다. 기도가 줄줄 나오며 하나님 이 딸의 입술에서부터 선포가 나오고 영이 열리고 뚫리 치어다. 막힌 모든 것들이 열리 치어다. 사탄아 물러가라. 샤바라라바. 시가다다다다다. 축복합니다. 할렐루야. 할렐루야.
It's a Kairos time for your, your church, Pastor. It's a Kairos time for you, Pastor Joshua, <laughs> for your family, because you've been stuck. There's been blockages, but God is opening it up. How many of you believe it in Jesus' name? Amen and amen. But the Lord is filling us this year because great harvest must come. But you know when harvest comes, there's also judgment. Don't be surprised by news and rumors of war. Because I believe there's going to be shaking even in the weather patterns and even in the economy. There's already a lot of shaking. And God is saying this is a season when only those who stand on the rock of Jesus, they will, they will be able to stand and prosper. But those who are compromising in religion, those who are compromising in, in whatever they're compromising, they'll, they'll fall. But you will have to be there to save them. So, so the Lord is calling the harvester of harvesters. And I pray a blessing over you. Everybody that's here will be harvester in Jesus' name. What's your name, sir? Hmm? Colin. Colin and, Colin and Sherry. Colin, I see the Lord giving you a real uh, blessing to be a leader and an apostle. I see like an apostolic call upon your life. I see you scribing and writing some things. I believe God is saying, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. It's not the end. It's just the beginning. Don't give up writing. Don't give up hearing. Don't give up moving. Don't give up going forward in the Lord. I feel like there's been a despair. It's like, well, I think I'm done with that season. I'm done with, with whatever I'm supposed to do. And can there be even greater things? But God says there is greater things coming. But I see your house. I see you opening up your doors to prodigals and people who are in need. I see God using your resources for the kingdom of God. Even new church plants we birth out of your household and your connections. You, will, you are to host church plants, church movements. So I just bless you. My son, I use the small things that are in my hand to do greater things. I see you like the little boy who brought uh, the fish and the, the bread and said, you know, this is all we have. But Jesus multiplied it to feed 5,000. You will be used like that. God's going to break you. And you've been through a season of breaking to a point where you felt like you couldn't live anymore. I break that assignment of death. I break that sabotaging spirit. God says, not only will you live, I will bring a miracle of multiplication through you. I'm not done with you, my son. I see you even traveling to different islands. I see Big Island. I see Maui. I see you traveling. I see you preaching the gospel with a team of people. God says, this is the beginning of a great harvest, and there is a place for you. You felt like you were misplaced, that even pastors kind of kicked you out. You didn't feel like there was a spiritual family for you, but God says, I'm removing the loneliness. I love you. I love you. I bless you now in Jesus' name. And woman of God, for you, the Lord is healing you. Any joint pains, any, any, anything that is not of God, I break it. I break it. I bless you to receive full healing of the Lord. God, is, I see like a big pink heart over you, and I feel like God is saying, you're my valentine. You're my valentine. I love you. I'm renewing your heart because your heart has been um, just beaten up. It's like bruised. God is healing your bruised heart. And it's from your own brothers and sisters. You felt bruised by them. You felt hurt by them. And you couldn't really say anything. God is saying, I'm healing your heart. And I will be the protector of your heart. Those who misuse your heart, it's like you are very motherly and generous and you, you tell people what you need and you talk to them and you have fellowship with them, but these women have, have hurt your heart. And God says, I've seen it. I'm healing your bruised heart. I'm bringing a renewal of your heart right now. And the pain of betrayal and, and uh, kind of this demonic thing that happened in relationships, God is dealing with it. The Lord is saying, I'm renewing you. My blood is enough. I'm healing you right now. So Father, heal her right now in Jesus' name. Let her know how much you love her. Just anoint her afresh right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Who has an illness? Okay. Anybody want to, um, let's see. Who has diabetes? Let's see a show of hands. I feel like God wants to heal people. Come on up. Come on up. We have diabetes. Now, you got to, you got to, we have to believe, like we have to create an atmosphere of faith. Do you believe that God can do this today? And uh, I also have appointments, but I'm going to have to just, we'll see what God does. But diabetes, yeah, God's going to heal you. Do you believe it? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Father, in the name of Jesus. I'm just going to anoint you really quickly. Just deal with diabetes and just cast it out. Just receive it in Jesus' name. Believe it. Pastor Bob, you have diabetes? <laughs> Why are you here? Why are you here? You do? Yeah. 
In the name of Jesus, Kayara, fire, 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 healing now in Jesus' name. Total healing. Balance is coming back to you. Aches are leaving. Even right here in the shoulders and your bones, God is readjusting your bones. She <laughs> fire, fire now in Jesus' name. Healing, healing. Hey, I rebuke the generational curse. It's from your generational line of your uh, men of your family. I break the curses. I see God cleansing your blood right now. I release healing power of God. This is against your warrior spirit. The devil is envious of how warrior-like you are. And God is saying, I'm dealing with every sickness, not just diabetes, but you're going to lose weight, Pastor. <laughs> Supernatural weight loss, I declare and right now. Yeah, we're going to do this, but I feel like God's allowing you to lose weight. He's all over you. Are you feeling heat right now in your body? Yeah, God is healing you. Fire, fire, fire. In Jesus' name, whoa. I rebuke the diabetes now in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Word curse is being canceled right now. You are healed, whole, and delivered in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Uh, leave the phone right there, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 it's better for you to receive instead of being so concerned about the prophetic word. So, yeah, I bless you. I bless you. I rebuke <laughs> diabetes now in Jesus' name. Be healed of every infirmity, not only diabetes. I bless her heart. The irregular heartbeat will be uh, gone in Jesus' name. I bless your kidneys. Women of God, God is healing your kidneys. Any trauma from the past, God is healing you. He's removing spirit of fear out of you now in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. He's removing the, the fogginess of of your mind, of your mind right now, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. I rebuke the diabetes. The generational curse, I break it off of you. Now in Jesus' name. It's a generational thing that runs in your family line. The Lord is saying, I'm dealing with the sins of your fathers. I will give you dreams about it. And as you repent, you'll be cleansed from every demonic evil thing that came against you. In Jesus' name. Fire. In Jesus' name. Fire, fire, fire. Yeah, receive that fire. Yeah, you're like an arrow of God. God's going to use you as a sharp arrow. Jesus is going to throw you in different regions. You're going to be a missionary that is sent. Whoa. Hey, yeah, I bless you. I bless you. Fire. You're going to be used like an arrow of God. I see Jesus holding you and throwing you to strategic places. And this illness will not hinder in any way. Hey, yeah, God is even strengthening your muscles right now in Jesus' name. He's anointing your feet right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Who needs to lose weight? Come on up. Pastor, you too. You need to lose weight. Come on up. Now, we're going to believe in faith. Yeah, I just want you guys to circle, circle around me. I'm not going to anoint you because uh, you're going to lose weight. Yeah. Okay, we'll do this. Because in, what happened in, um, so what happened in LA outpouring was that we just believed, and then we started checking our pants. Everybody started checking our pants. God was just taking the pounds off of you. So, and I, you see, every time I do this, we have like 30, 40 people that come out. But just receive. And then in faith, I want you to, you're going to feel something different in your tummy. And then just check your pants because it's going to come loose. So in the name of Jesus, right now, right now, in the name of Jesus, I see Jesus walking around this room, anointing you. I don't need to put my hands on you. Jesus is walking around. He's healing you. He's healing you. Now, I release fire God now. Be healed. Every excess weight that is sent by the enemy's camp be gone now in Jesus' name. Every weight that they gain because of stress that is not from the Lord be gone right now in Jesus' name. What do you, you feel fire? Anybody feel heat in their tummy? Let, let me see a show of hands. Heat in your tummy? Yeah. In the back, too. Okay. I see Jesus walking around and healing you in your leg. Okay. Now, if you believe that something's happening and your pants are loose, I want you to come up and testify. Uh, I see God's going to redo your body. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Who, who feels God's doing something? You need to, let me... Woman of God, come up here. Come up here. Come up here. Do you feel the heat in your body? 
Yeah. Check your pants. Do you feel like it's getting loose? Is that looser than before? Yeah. Just give her a mic. Yeah, I feel. Uh, you have to give her a mic so she can check. No, I I do feel the the heat and the I, <laughs> I see it. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I I see it. It's like swirling. Yeah. And um, yeah, I. I you feel, feel it, it, right? Yeah. Okay, more Lord, more Lord, more Lord, more <laughs> Lord. This is for your next assignment. You're to dance for the Lord. God's making you fit for the dance of the Lord. Your dance is going to be anointed and powerful. You're a warrior dancer. You're going you're gonna to trample upon the enemy's camp. And that is why God's, I see it loosening. Do you feel it loosening? More, Lord, more, Lord. Fire, fire, fire. Fire, fire now in Jesus' name. Yeah, God's working on you. How do you feel? Even some of you overnight, you're going to go home feeling like, ooh, something's different. And then tomorrow morning, weigh yourself. You're going to have to testify. What are you feeling? I just feel his heat. <laughs> and I feel his love, too. Yeah, yeah. You're a, you're a mighty warrior. Let me, let me pray for you right there. I feel fire, fire coming upon you. Right here, I'm going to pray for you because God's giving you the next level anointing as well. There's been some uh, false accusation against you within the body of Christ. Bless you, bless you. I break the false accusations in Jesus' name. Anoint her for the next level assignment. I am upgrading you, my daughter. Fire, 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 fire. Power now in Jesus' name. Yeah, God's working on you. Woo! <laughs> Woo! More, 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 more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you're doing spiritual hula dance. <laughs> she is doing spiritual hula dance. She's her God is using her to shake things off of Hawaii. She got out of us. She got out of our more Lord. Keep on, keep on, keeping on. Keep on. Anybody else? What are you? What's going? On? Are you losing weight? Yeah, fire, 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 fire. More Lord. She got out of Bakawa. More Lord, more Lord. In Jesus' name. Joy of the Lord is in this room. Joy of the Lord is in this room. More Lord. Are you losing? Come on up. I think you're losing weight, sister. I, you're, come on up. Yeah. You're losing weight right now, aren't you? I think so. It's, it's, it's a little looser. Yeah, it's looser. Yeah. Because there's heat all over your body right now. What's going on? You're getting drunk in the spirit, too. <laughs> Yeah, we'll let, we'll let you lie here. It's okay. Yeah, I see. We just see there's God is all over her. More Lord, more Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! Your eyesight's going to get better, sister. Your eyesight's getting better now in Jesus' name. New wine, blessing. She, <laughs> there it is. Just receive it. Just receive it more. More Lord, more Lord. Let her just stay there. God is working on her. God is working on her. She. Uh, more Lord, more Lord. More. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Fire! Breaker anointing. There's a breaker anointing coming upon you. Fire, fire. Boy, they're going to go all over Hawaii dancing. Whoa, whoa. More Lord, more Lord. What's going on with you? Hmm? More Lord, more Lord, more Lord. Yeah, whatever, every condition be gone now in Jesus' name. Be healed, be healed, be healed. Fire. In Jesus' name. Come on, what's God doing with you? Come on up. Yeah, are you losing weight? You feel it? Um, <laughs> Afro 
지금은 모르겠고. 지금은 모르겠고. <웃음> 그 바지를 입고 오셨어야 되는데 어, 지금 모르. 빠지는 모르겠어. 아, 그러면. 근데 기분에. 기분에. 네, 네. Yeah, more Lord, more Lord, fire. Fire, la la la. Joy, 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 joy. <웃음> 아니 모든 게다 떠나가고 있어요. 축사가 일어나고 있어요. Everything is le- believing you right now in Jesus name. Jesus name. Everything is leaving you right now in Jesus name. What's going on everybody? Who else? More 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 more. Yeah. 바지가 조금 내려간 것 같아요. You feel like you lost weight? Yeah. It's loosened. Wow, it's looser. Yes. Praise God, praise God, hallelujah. Who, anybody else? Mm. God is breaking the curses off of you. Amen. God is breaking the curses off of you. 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 God is breaking the curses off more Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What's going on with you? I think my donut will get smaller. My Oh, yeah. Every, yeah, I bless you. I bless you. The, the stress be gone in Jesus' name. Amen. Fire, 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 fire. In Jesus' name. Woo! Woo! Hallelujah! 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 Just come closer if you need healing. We're just gonna, um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna play some music. We're gonna dance, but God's gonna move among you. Just receive all kinds of healing because I believe God is breaking curses today. I believe God is healing multiple conditions. And And move as God gives you movement because the Lord is healing you. Revive us, Lord, and make us holy. We want to be your people. Revive us, Lord, reveal your glory. We long to see your face. Revive us, joy, joy, joy. Woo, new wine. <laughs> You're getting drunk in the spirit. Oh my goodness. New wine. You're being drunk in the spirit. <laughs> joy of the Lord. Send your tongue to fire. Sing your
Let's give Jesus a mighty clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for a breaking. I really felt like heaviness was lifting. How many of you feel like the air is clear? I see clearly. I know how it feels like when the devils leave. Today, a lot of you had massive transformation. You might not be able to put into words, but God did so much right now. Do you have testimony? Anybody have a testimony? Do you, anybody have a testimony? Did you feel something leaving? Because when spirit of prophecy comes, suddenly everything is crisp. How many of you feel like the room cleared up? Right? It's, I know this feeling. Every time I prophesy, the room will clear up from dark clouds. When we started worship today, it was a bit dark. Like there was something, you were, you were under the oppression of the principality, but we overcame it. I see clearly now. Do you feel it? Yeah. Anybody have any testimony before we end? I think that's all I have for you. But Okay, let's check your pants. Yeah, yeah. Mine, after um, jumping and I had a knee pain and it, it's gone. Amen. It's gone. Yeah. yeah. Praise God. Yes. Yeah. Amen. My back pain is gone. But your back pain is gone too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're losing weight right now, brother. Yeah. No, you got to believe in faith. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's working now, Pastor. Good night. Oh, wow. Pastor said that um, be, he's at very athletic, but he couldn't exercise very much. But right now, he feels like he's everything dark, like the heaviness lifted. He's yeah. lighter. Yeah. 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 날 옆에서 젊은이들 나를 못 이겼어요. 탁구 하면. 근데 다이어베시 오고 난더 배가 나오고 난리가 나서 몸이 굉장히 둔해졌는데 지금 아주 날아갈 것 같아요. You wanna see? <웃음> yes, we wanna see. Jump, 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 jump. jump. <웃음> yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. <웃음> 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 This is my Major dancing because God said you can overcome. Learn about David dancing. You can overcome many women's jealous kind of ones. Everything you can break through. That's why Kylo, I come. I learn dancing and dancing, dancing. Amen. I'm crazy for overcome the three dancing. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the right time to come. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Well, uh, feel free to share testimonies. Leave, our, leave your contact if you want the Prophecy ebook. But, Father, I thank you for every good thing you did. I thank you for this church. Can we give a round of applause to Global Revival Church? Thank you so much, Pastor. And also to Pastor Bob Koo as well. Thank you, Pastor. Um, thank you for taking the uh, chance of faith to open the doors for us to do this in Jesus' name. Father, I bless every person here in Jesus' name. Could you close? Anyway, we already eat spiritual food, I think, enough, yeah? But we have to <laughs> prepare the, your physical, whatever you want to join. Make a table together, yeah? Lunch it together. Share testimony together. It's better, I think. You want? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay, group of teams. So make a set up the table in the middle. Okay. Chair. And then by yourself, take it, whatever you want to do. Just take it and eat. Yeah.